Hello. Uh, so this is again Unit 2, Physiology and Health of Higher Human Biology, and this is Key Area 6. The first video on it is about structure and cardiac output, so structure of the heart and cardiac output of the heart. Now there's going to be four videos to do with this. Uh, we're going to be building on National 5 knowledge. I would strongly recommend going back to the stuff on National 5. We'll review it in a slide's time, uh, but it's a lot. So if you've forgotten your National 5 stuff about the heart, go back over it. Like stop this video right now and go back over the National 5 stuff. Okay, so in terms of the National 5 stuff for the heart, so again, there was a lot of it. So the heart is a muscular pump. It's that big thing that actually puts the blood around your body. So it pushes oxygenated blood towards the body and it pushes deoxygenated blood back towards the body, which we kind of talked about in the last video anyway, in terms of arteries, veins and capillaries. The heart structure that we learned about at NAT5, there are four, four main cham chambers. You've got your right and your left atria and your right and your left ventricles. Remember, atria is a plural of atrium. It's also important to remember when you look at these diagrams, it's always the opposite way around than it is. It's almost as if you're like lying on the diagram and thinking about it as your own heart in terms of left and right when you're looking at it. So don't get confused by that. That's a difference in my teaching style compared to yours. I say, imagine you've killed someone, sliced open their chest and are looking at their heart compared to you going, oh, imagine it's yourself. Yeah, I'm evil. We're very different people. Mm. Um, so you've got different, there were certain blood vessels you needed to know the name of. One of them was the vena cava, which it, it carries blood from the body to the heart. Uh, the pulmonary artery carries blood from the heart to the lungs. The pulmonary vein carries blood from the lungs to the heart. And the aorta carries blood from the heart to the body. So you have to know which ones are veins, which ones are arteries. It's quite nice. Again, it's alliterative. Aorta is an artery, vena cava is a vein. Pulmonary artery surprises an artery, pulmonary vein is a vein. Um, we again learned that valves stop the backflow of blood, which we talked about in the last video as well, but there's also valves in the heart, which we'll talk about a bit in this video, that stop the backflow between different chambers. And you learned that the coronary artery is the one that is responsible for giving the blood supply to the actual heart muscle itself. So you learned a lot in that five, you're about to learn a whole lot more now. Uh, right, so we recommend pause the video just now and see if you can fill in these blanks. I'll give you three seconds. Two, one. This is everything. Right, there is two, three, three new things that's on this. Technically, it's two new things that's on this. I'm not going to go through all the pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, left atrium, right atrium. These are all things that you should know by now. The thing that is new that we are going to introduce to you is the names of the valves, okay? The ones that run between the atria and the ventricles are called atrioventricular valves or AV valves. And okay? we just learn AV now, valves, it's easier. If someone asks you in an exam or a test, what is the purpose of the AV valve? You have to be more specific than stops the backflow of blood. You have to say, for example, if they picked the one on the right side of the heart, okay? If they ask you what's the purpose of that valve, you'd have to say it stops the backflow of blood from the right ventricle to the right atrium. You have to be more specific there. So you have to have that backflow of blood thing, but you have to define the locations as to where the blood would go to if it wasn't working. Uh, next, we've got the semilunar valves. Again, your teacher might have taught you this in Nat 5, but it's not uh, Nat 5 stuff, so it could be new to you. Is these are the names of the valves that go out of the arteries of the heart. So you can see them labeled at the top there, semilunar valves or SL valves. Okay. Now, again, these are stopping black flow of blood. But again, if you're asked the specific, what is the purpose of the valve in the red side, for example, then you'd say it stops the back flow of blood from the aorta to the left ventricle. Okay. So that is learning point number one, the names of the two valves and how to answer the what is the purpose of the valves questions. Good. So in terms of what we kind of need to know about the heart, again, we kind of already stated these facts. So the heart is a large muscular pump. Again, it pumps that, blood yeah. all around your Look body. It. It's amazing. It's a beating heart. Uh, it has a left side and a right hand side, which is responsible for slightly different types of blood. The right side of the heart is responsible for pumping deoxygenated blood to the lungs, so the lungs can then oxygenate it. The left side pumps newly oxygenated blood all the way into the body and then it goes around the body and comes all the way back. So you need to know what side of the heart do, deals with deoxygenated and what side deals with oxygenated blood. I mean, it's not in a body and it's beating. Yes. Look at it. How did they do it? It's amazing. OK, now this is the, um, the next new thing. So uh, cardiac output, this is an important formula. You have to have it memorized. They might not give it to you in the test situation. I have seen both times where they have given it and sometimes when they haven't given it. Um, and you just need to have it memorized just to be sure. 
The amount of blood a ventricle can pump every minute is known as your cardiac output, the output of your heart. Okay? It depends on the amount of blood your heart can move and the number of heart times your heart is beating. If your heart is beating faster, logically, you will be putting more blood through your body. If your heart is beating more, as in contracting and expanding more, again, you'll be putting more blood out of your body. So your heart rate, so the thing that is the HR in that equation or in that formula is just there. So your heart rate is how many times your heart beats in one minute. Now it is important that you realise it is in one minute because of a question it might say here is it for 15 seconds. And if that's the case, multiply it by four because you want to be talking about one minute all the time. Now for normal people, this range is between 60 and 90 beats per minute at rest. You don't really need to know that fact. The key fact in this is really just that first sentence. Uh, you can count your own, own heart rate. The easiest way to do it, count it for six seconds, multiply it by 10, because then that's 60 seconds, so that is your minute there. But in general, just knowing heart rate is how many times your heart physically beats in one minute. Okay, athletes have trained their muscles uh, to have more efficient oxygen delivery. What this means is their heart rate won't increase as quickly as a normal person during exercise. So what we can see in the table is a normal has a much higher resting heart rate than, say, an athlete. These are just numbers that I invented. I think an athlete that's got 40 beats per minute as a resting heart rate might be dead. Um, but you can see as they start to do exercise again, the athlete does not need to beat their heart as often. Also, what we find with athletic heart rate, it recovers much faster after exercise is over. So these are indications of higher levels of fitness. That might be an apply your knowledge question that you get in an exam is describe how you know that the athlete is fitter than the normal. So in terms of stroke volume, so the thing is the SV in the formula that we talked about. Now, stroke volume is the volume of blood that both ventricles can contract out in one heartbeat. Now, again, you need to know it's both because there's been a question before, which royally throws people every year when they do the past paper questions. It's talking about one ventricle and they sit and they do it and they say, but this isn't an option in the multiple choice answers. And the idea is you have to double it because you have two ventricles. So it is the volume of blood that both ventricles can contract out the heart in one single beat. Now, this can increase or decrease depending on the oxygen demand at the time. So if your oxygen demand is low, so like you're not really doing it and you're just lying and being lazy, this is not going to be particularly high. If you are doing sport or running around or doing something that is really high energy and high intensity, this will increase because your body needs more blood around it to be able to feed the oxygen to your different muscles. So when your heart is beating harder, your, your stroke volume is going to be higher. And that's something you can physically feel yourself. Not only does your heart beat faster, but you can feel your heart beating harder. Uh, so again, athletic stroke volume. Stroke volume is harder to measure, but they have done science and shown that a higher stroke volume uh, per heartbeat athletes actually have. So basically their, their heart is capable of expanding slightly wider and carrying more blood per heartbeat than a normal. Okay, so again, this table just shows that trend. So a normal person at rest might be able to transport 65 centimetres cubed uh, per heartbeat, whereas an athlete is 80 centimetres cubed. If they've got more stroke volume, you don't need as many heartbeats and so that means less energy is required by the heart in order to circulate the same amount of oxygen or possibly a greater amount of oxygen. OK, so this is just you can do this as we practice. You can pause the video here. It's a table. This is quite like a kind of exam question you might get. You've got different values there. You need to fill in the question mark using the formula that is given at the top. So if you want to do it, pause it now. We are about to show you the answers. Mm. The format of this, it works the same as distance, speed, time things. So again, you'd have CO on the top of your triangle, SV and HR on the bottom layers of your triangle. Wow, do you want to teach maths? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it, it works, it works. Yeah. Here, here's all the answers. So hopefully you got them right. Hopefully it makes sense. If you didn't, go back, have a look at it, double check it, see why you might have made a silly mistake. OK, so to summarise, this is the stuff that you need to know. So the atrioventricular valve is the name of the valve between the atrium and ventricle, and it's stopping back flow of blood between those things. Yeah, the semilunar valve, sometimes known as the SL valve, is the valve that stops the back flow of blood from the arteries into the ventricles. Uh, the and card by that, we mean like the... I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't read, sorry. No, no, sorry. It's fine. You said the right thing. You're yeah. fine. Uh, cardiac output is the blood pushed through both ventricles in a minute, and it's calculated using that formula, which you have to know. Uh, the heart rate is the number of beats per minute of the heart. And the stroke volume is the volume of blood out of both ventricles in one beat. OK, so that is the end of this little section. The next section that we look at is the cardiac cycle. And I'm so glad I remembered that because I haven't checked it in advance. Uh, so we'll be learning about what the cardiac cycle is. Important things that we'll be learning is me pronouncing the word systole 
correctly. That's that's mainly the no. thing that I do not do. It's called systole or systole. I don't know, but we'll find out. Uh, see you then.